This is section 3.5 on transformations for graphing functions, and we're now on example 5. For the given functions, complete parts a through c, where to describe this transformation from the parent function f of x, the, the square root function, to the g of x given here, we're to graph both of those on the grid, showing points, and finally tell the domain of both functions. Okay. So the transformation from this parent function to this, what, are, what do we see? The first thing we see is that negation on the outside, outside meaning it's vertical, and it's a vertical flip or a vertical reflection, whatever you want to call that, and vertical affects y, and what we would do, we would multiply y by negative 1 to get, those, to get that flip to happen. Okay, the second we see is inside the function, so it's horizontal, it's a horizontal shift, right? Which direction? To the right, right one. So we add one to x. And then back outside the function, we have a vertical shift up three, right? Which means we would add three, two all their y-coordinates. Okay, so let's try this time. I mean, instead of making a table, I'm just going to write some ordered pairs. So for our f of x, the ordered pairs we've been using uh, to graph that. Now remember, this is the square root function, so our domain is limited to, um, to 0 and the positive integers. So we would have the point 0 and 0, right? Take the square root of 0 and we get 0. We could put in 1 and we would get 1. We could put in 4 and get 2, and we could put in 9 and get 3, and that's probably all will fit on this graph. So these are the four points on our parent function here. So let's graph that. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. The question is, where do each of these points go in this transformation? So our g of x. What did we say we're going to do? Well, we're going to, for x, we're just going to add 1. So for all my x coordinates, I just need to increase those by 1. That's it for x. y, I multiply by negative 1 and add 3. Which do we do first? Right, we multiply. Multiplication comes before addition. So negative 1 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 3 is 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1. And negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, plus 3 is 0. So now I know this is the transformation for each of those points. So I plot those four points, and I'm done. So much easier than choosing x is getting y's, not knowing where I'm going to end up on the graph. I'm taking these exact four points and just moving them to 1, 3, 2, 2, 5, 1, and 10, 0. Now, remember, 0, 0 is now 1, 3. And there is nothing, there was nothing to the left of that point. Again, here, there is nothing to the left of that point. We start here. And we have something like that for our g of x. We expected it to flip vertically, flip over, and then it shifted up, and it shifted right. And that's how we ended up with this sort of upside down looking thing, right? Okay, let's talk about the domain of f of x, our original parent function. And we said that we can't allow any negatives to get under that radical, so the lowest we can go is 0 and all the way to positive infinity, right? What does that do for the range? What is our range? Well, the lowest our y values are is 0, and it goes to positive infinity. So that's the domain and range for the parent function. What about the transformed function? How low do our x's go now? Well, we can see it. We do not go below 1. We do get to 1, that point 1, 3, but we, no x values are below that. So from 1 and then on to positive infinity. What about our y values? What's the lowest y value? Here, 
on the parent, the lowest was zero, and then it goes on and on and on up. But here, this arrow means continuing, continuing, continuing this way. So the lowest for our range of the g of x is negative infinity. This is just going to continue on down. We have y values way down here. How high do we go in the y direction? Well, it looks like we get up here to 3, and that's it. We will never get above that, and it does include 3.